Hello, my name is Elliot Clay. This is my final research update for my ORU with Texas A&M. My topic is density functional theory based structure sampling for force field development. My host professor is Dr. Yao Fei Chan, and my graduate mentors are Daniel Winhelm, Nathan Wilson, and Bayou Zhang. In my first update, I talked about density functional theory, which is a way to calculate the properties of a material through a quantum mechanics framework accurately and efficiently. And I also talked about classical molecular dynamics, which is a way to calculate the properties of a material through a classical mechanics framework. Classical MD has a specific pitfall to where it has a high reliance on the classical potential files that cannot be uniformly created. My project is to use DFT and machine learning as a substitute for these potential files in order to create a library for future research. In this research that we can we can then use this to identify unique thermodynamic and kinetic properties of materials. The method that we are using involves phonons. All phonons are are a vibration of a crystal lattice. We are interested in phonons since they are able to bring the temperature of quantum mechanics calculations above zero Kelvin. You can see from the video on screen, phonons in their harmonic terms, which are their lower energy terms, act as a simple harmonic oscillator. Whenever phonons get to their higher energy terms, they act more anharmonically, which gives materials their unique thermodynamic properties. We can use phonons to determine the thermal transport in a material, the phase transition, as well as the thermal expansion. The specific method that we are using is called density functional perturbation theory, or DFPT. DFPT is a linear response method that relies on the 2n plus 1 theorem from quantum mechanics. All that means is that if you want to calculate the energy term of the 2n plus 1 term, all you need is the wave function corrections for the n term. The advantages of DFPT is that it does not need a supercell to perform these phonon calculations in their harmonic terms. And it's also able to calculate and harmonic phonons with high accuracy and low computation cost. Since it's a density based method, it actually automatically accounts for the strength of the bonds between the materials, which means that there's no exceptions made for either ionic, covalent, or metallic in an extreme sense. The specific method we used involved the quantum espresso package for phonons, and our calculations are outlined in the flowchart. So the first step that we did was to gather structures from the materials project or IS, ICSD databases. We then output these structures in a way that can be read by quantum espresso. I personally use the program Vesta since it can automatically read the CIF outputs from quantum espresso or materials project and ICSD in a way that was very convenient. And then our next step was to create the job submission scripts and input files that we needed to run all the calculations. The first calculation we ran was a self consistent calculation to get the wave functions for each material. From these wave functions, we were able to calculate the dynamical matrices for phonon calculations. From this step, we are actually able to do a check on whether our structure is stable since phonons structures should have a zero frequency at the gamma point, which is the zero point for the structure in reciprocal space. This is because the gamma point should only have the entire structure be displaced in a particular direction, which should not change the attraction between the bonds. So there should not be any extra energy added to the structure. If this is the true, then we can use a Fourier transform to calculate the interatomic force constants for the harmonic terms and then perform phonon calculations with these force constants to validate that they are correct. If there were no imaginary uh, frequencies or any other issues with the data, we can then save this for future use. And if not, we went to reformatting or, re or further relaxing the structure. The three structures we chose to test was uh, 
one ionic, one metallic, and one covalent structure, since we wanted to verify it, that it works for each of the three uh, types of bonding. The first structure is sodium chloride, which is a cubic structure. The second is copper, which is a face center cubic structure. And then uh, the third structure is silicon, which is a diamond shaped. We obtained all of these atomic positions from materials project and then visualize them all with Vesta. The first step that we did was to run a phonon cal calculation for the gamma points on the Texas A&M supercomputing cluster ADA with 10 computing cores. We did the calculation within uh, under a minute for all of them since we were concerned about the calculation time being too long but they were all at a low computation to cost. The phonon frequencies are all around zero. They're not going to be exactly zero since there's issues with convergence and also issues with the uh, acoustic sum rule that's validated by the quantum espresso calculations. But we just wanted to make sure that they were close enough to be validated as stable. You can see by the density of states calculation for NACL that the uh, imaginary phonon frequencies went away and that this is a, a stable graph showing the probability of a specific oscillator being at a, a specific frequency for uh, this NACL crystal. The calculation time was the highest of the three that we did since it has the most the, the highest number of frequencies to calculate. This is the phonon dispersion for NACL and you can see that it is near uh, it, nearly identical to a reference that I pulled from a specific paper just on phonon dispersions for NACL. The next structure is the density states of copper. And you can see that it had a much lower computation time since it has the least number of frequencies to calculate. And the only difference between the copper and sodium chloride input files is that copper, since it is a metallic structure, needs to have meshing in its uh, occupation to deal with the fact that it has random spikes in energy for the uh, when doing its calculations. This is the phonon dispersion for copper and you can see it is extremely close to a reference once again. The final calculation that we did was the density states for silicon and you can see that its phonon dispersion calculation is the same as a reference with the only difference being that they took a different path than I did in my calculations on the left. What they did was they went to an extra uh, point in reciprocal space that they called W, but if you were to remove that point then it would have the exact same phonon dispersion calculations. What we can further do now that we have validated the harmonic force constants is that we can calculate the anharmonic force constants with the formula on the screen. What this is, is the first term is a the average thermal energy of the system, and the next two terms are a box molar transform, which is, or a transformation, which is a way of calculating uh, random pushes to the crystal lattice in a uniform distribution. And the final term, the exponential term, is Bloch's theorem, which accounts for the peri periodic trends that happen with uh, crystal lattices. In summary, what I've done is created a workflow to compute harmonic interatomic force constants. We can then use these to calculate the anharmonic interatomic force constants, which can be used to calculate the thermodynamic properties of a material. All the calculations that I have performed for this project can be found on a GitHub that's going to be in the description and, uh, and is also on screen currently. Future work that you can do is to calculate these anharmonic interatomic force constants and then output them in a way that can be read by a classical molecular dynamics program. You can then also interface this program that I've done with a machine learning process to reduce comp computation time. These are all the references that I have for this project. Thank you for listening and have a good day.